Let's take a look at Rivery. Rivery is a cloud data platform in the ETL ELT space that uh, help organizations uh, build modern data pipelines to connect their source applications into their data warehouse environment for activation and analysis of data. Typically, uh, when folks think about Rivery, just from an orientation perspective, you think about it in comparison with other platforms like Fivetran, which we've covered on the platform, Stitch Data. This whole ecosystem is a very rich and dynamic space. On the side here, it does call out the differences for those who are interested in comp feature functions. I would recommend you do check them out. Of course, this is from the Rivery's perspective. I think always having comparisons does give a contextual positioning of what we're looking at here. Back to Rivery, they play in the space of ETL, so extracting data from those sources loading them and then also facilitating activation analysis of that data within Snowflake and the eventual reverse ETL, getting that data sent back to the SaaS applications for marketing campaign, for sales outreach and the business activities that teams might be doing. That said, let's jump right in into our demo for today and create a brand new account. With our account created, we're going to be welcome with a page that looks like this. Let's go ahead and move that, exit the demo and uh, a very intuitive ui to the left is the navigation and to the right is the canvas for doing work as always the focus of our demos is not necessarily the ui uh, ui does have a certain aspect to the experience but there is an understanding that ui always changes so we're not going to focus so much on that as much as we do on the core functionalities of the tool and the platform to the left side here we can see the option to create uh, the vocabulary is actually unique you can create rivers connecting your source to target is considered a river hence the name rivery a river flows your data flows through a river from the source the mountain top down into the data warehouse think about it as the ocean or the lake downstream here we can create a source to target or just an etf pipeline uh, you can create a logic and this is very relevant for uh, doing transformations using sql or python we're going to touch on that and then also exposing the data as APIs we get and post. And then the concept of kits, which are pre-built pipelines you can uh, essentially copy and reuse without reinventing the wheel. So coming here to dashboard, I currently have no dashboard running, but if there are pipelines or if there are rivers that are running, of course, you're going to see all of that here, the number of rivers, you're going to see the sources, the logic and the volume are being processed. Kit, this is where you find a library of pre-built templates you can use. For example, HubSpot to Snowflake and then connections. Of course, we're going to create a connections, variables and the environment you're working with, setting up your prod, your dev and test environment. And then of course, there are settings below. But let's jump right in into creating our very first reverse. Again, the term river would be analogous to the term a pipeline or the term a workflow or a data flow. Here, there are the sources that can be selected. We're going to search for Postgres, which we've used in previous demos, and we'll use Postgres, and we're going to authenticate into that Postgres account. The credentials are in, do optimistic handling, keep the rest of this default, test that connection. The test was successful, and we now have the Postgres instance uh, created. Our Postgres uh, source has been created and that was successful. The next piece here, we can always go in again for further test that connection if we want. We can add new connections, edit the connection, but the name we've given for that is Demo Hub Postgres. Click on Next. This is where we get to set up our destination. Some of the RDBMSs will show up in here. And let's select Snowflake as always. In here, we put in our connection credential. Our Snowflake connection has been successfully set up. Double click to test that connection one more time. See success there. For database, we're going to be putting this data into DemoDB and the schema would be put that into the public schema. And as always, depending on the nomenclature for your business, you can uh, certainly put the prefixes to the table if you want or leave that blank. So just to recap, we have our source, which is coming from Postgres, getting uh, the data. We're going to be loading that into Snowflake. We're defining our, our Snowflake configurations here. So let's go ahead, test that. We can show me the schemas. We do have a public, 
and we're going to be grabbing mock data, mock customer data on the Postgres side. What's interesting here is you can go in and actually select specific columns that you want in tables with hundreds or thousands of columns. You might not always want to bring everything into your data warehouse. Having that uh, flexibility is, uh, is relevant. We've defined a schema. Are we ready to schedule a river? I think with a river successfully set up, let's validate what we have. And typically I'll go ahead and give this a uh, befitting name, a uh, load snowflake uh, river demo hub. And just to validate our source here is coming from Postgres. Uh, we can do custom queries, so union tables, or use a legacy river. Let's just keep everything uh, basic here, doing a standard extraction. Of course, you can use log-based extraction on the source side. Our destination is going into a Snowflake warehouse. Uh, we're prefixing that with ODS. Uh, we're using the demo DB, a public schema, validated one more time. Do a refresh within the demo DB public. There should be no tables there, should be blank. And uh, let's do an override. Again, not recommended for production, but for the demo purposes, we're just going to override that. You can always do append only or uh, upset. A merge of the, of the schema we're selecting. I'll select the mock data and then uh, settings based on how often you want this to run from a scheduler perspective. What happens on failure? You can mail uh, folks. What happens if there are warnings? You can mail those out. And then, of course, you can see activity. Let's go back and execute this uh, particular uh, river. Here it tells us load snowflake river is waiting to start. Now the load uh, Snowflake River is now running and it tells us the Postgres to Snowflake file zone is waiting to run. Essentially, it goes to the source, which will be your Postgres database. It copies that data. I'm not sure of what happens behind the scenes, but by intuition, it's going to persist the file somewhere. Here, that file zone is done successfully. Once that's done, it should then start loading, copying that file over and getting that loaded into Snowflake. So they, they have some internal storage uh, somewhere, which could be like an S3 bucket uh, for that. That's done. Let's go to activities here to see we've run that successfully. Let's open that up. And this is a successful run. You can download the logs. If we go back into Snowflake, do a refresh, we now have the ODS mock data. We appended ODS to the name of it. Do a data preview here. We can see that data getting loaded into Snowflake. Fascinating, uh, this is a reverie uh, performing the ELT type function. Uh, you load, extract the data and you have that data loaded. Another now, concept within Rivery is that of transformation, emphasizing the T in ELT, talking about what happens when you want to transform that data within Snowflake. Of course, you can leverage DBT or native SQL in Snowflake to do that transformation. Uh, but uh, Riveries provide capabilities too for that. Go back here and create new. Instead of creating uh, the EL, so the extract and load, which we did, so rivers, uh, we're going to create a logic river. And within this, you can select an existing river, you can select an action, or even Python. You can write Python code to do transformations. But for us here, let's do a SQL DB transformation, select our Snowflake. Uh, instant within this, you can come in here and put in SQL code. You can put in SQL queries, and this would be the transformations that would run now within your Snowflake to do the processing of that data that has been loaded. So the T in ELT. So very fascinating. Uh, Our next piece back. here to call out is the concept of kits for teams that are, are not heavy on the code side. You want a low code approach. You want a templatized approach. Things in life usually repeat, and folks might have done what you're trying to do already. Coming in here, you can preview uh, this kit. I'm going to look at the kit here for getting HubSpot data and objecting and updating objects in Snowflake. So you can use this kit and this will give you a template ready to build off uh, as opposed to writing things from scratch. It also gives you queries. So a lot of capabilities to get you off the ground. Here is a high level architecture diagram of leveraging this kit. And so then, this is not only touching the tip of the iceberg uh, here for Rivery. Uh, a tool within the modern data space as teams are looking to build out their data warehouse, leveraging tools that can bring in data. The way I think about it is if you're going to have a pool in your house, you need the plumbing or the rivers that can bring data or bring water into that pool. Otherwise, an empty swimming pool is, is not of no use to the business. Having an empty data warehouse is of no use to your business uh, for the most part. So having 
uh, the plumbing, the ETL, the pipelines that can bring that data in or the rivers that can bring that data in is a very strong and compelling capability. As part of making that decision, people always will consider what connectors does it have? Or how do they do billing? Is it by rows or the volume of data that's processed or is it by seat? Where does this data uh, reside? What are the, the, the residency requirements? Does it stay within my firewall or, or does some of this data stay on-prem within uh, Rivery? Uh, but those are questions I would direct you. If you have those questions, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, reach out to the Rivery account team. I'm sure they can certainly help you with those decisions. But there you have it through here with Demo Hub, we've highlighted another uh, modern data tool within this rich and dynamic uh, ecosystem. Hopefully this was helpful to you as always. If you do have any questions or comments or feedback or thoughts or, or tools you should look at, don't hesitate to leave that in the comment section below and we'll see what we can do. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next demo.